Hello, good morning, friends. It's time for story time. And I'm at Samuel's Public Library. And this is my friend Bear. <laughs> He's happy to see you. And our theme today is going on a picnic. So Bear and I have prepared a little picnic basket. And we have some yummy things and a nice blanket and cloth for our picnic. And uh, I don't know, what do you like to put in your picnic? Maybe some sandwiches. Do you have a favorite? Maybe some cupcakes. I always like fruit and maybe watermelon. So those are fun picnic things. Now that we're in June and summer, days are here. It's fun. Food always tastes better outdoors, doesn't it? So I Bear um, we, wants to be here because we have a story about Bear going on a picnic. So Bear's going to sit and listen. And here is our Mr. Bear's picnic by Debbie Gloria. Ooh, there's some good things in there, in that picnic basket. What a beautiful day, said Mr. Bear. As soon as he opened his eyes, he crept out of bed, trying not to wake Mrs. Bear. It's perfect for a picnic, he said softly. I think I'll take the baby out for the day. Mrs. Bear opened one bleary eye. Hmm, that's a good idea, she yawned. Then she turned over and went back to sleep. As Mr. Bear and the baby walked past the grizzly bear's house, they heard voices from the branches above them. Here we are, Mr. Bear, said Fred. Are you going on a picnic, said Ted. Can we come too, said Fuzz. Mr. Bear groaned. Please, begged Fred, Ted, and Fuzz. And they tumbled out of the tree in a furry heap and ran to tell Mrs. Grizzly Bear where they were going. It took a long time to choose a good place for the picnic. Mr. Bear thought the first spot was just right. Dad always brings us here, moaned Fred. It's boring. Mr. Bear thought the next spot was interesting. This is a fly infested swamp, said Ted. Everyone agreed that the third spot was too quiet and gloomy. This place gives me the creeps, said Fuzz. Where do you like to have your picnic? Maybe by our river. The Shenandoah. At last, Mr. Bear found the perfect place. He put his baby down in a grassy hollow and the picnic basket under a tree. He was just stretching out in the sun for a little snooze when Fred bounced onto his stomach. <laughs> I'm starving, said Fred. I could eat six sandwiches. I'm ravenous, said Ted. I could eat six sandwiches and whatever else is in that basket. I'm famished, said Fuzz. I could eat six sandwiches, whatever else is in that basket, and the basket as well. <laughs> Mr. Bear left his comfortable spot with a sigh. Okay, we'll have something to eat. Let's see what we've got for lunch. He opened the picnic basket 
inside was a teddy bear, a set of blocks, and some toys with wheels. You can't eat toys, said Fred, glaring at Mr. Bear. I think you brought the wrong basket, said Ted. What are we going to eat, said Fuzz. The baby began to cry. I know, said Mr. Bear. We'll have fish for our picnic. And he strode off to a rock where he balanced his baby on his shoulders, dipped upon the water, and waited. What's taking so long, asked Fred, while Ted and Fuzz watched. Maybe I should wiggle my paw like a worm, said Mr. Bear. I know I could catch something if I just stretched a bit further. Do you like to go fishing? Blub, 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 said Mr. Bear, slipping head first into the pond. Da blub, 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 cried his baby, clinging tightly to his ear. <laughs> Do you see any fish down there? You're not supposed to fall in, said Fred. Our dad never gets wet when he goes fishing, said Ted, and he always catches lots of fish. All you're going to catch is a cold, added Fuzz. I don't think we're going to have a picnic after all. Sometimes things don't go exactly the way we planned, do they? Oh, yes, we are, declared Mr. Bear. Shh, you'll scare away the fish, said Fred. You know, I don't even like fish, said Ted. What, said Mr. Bear. Dad makes us eat loads of fish, said Fuzz. With all the jaggedy bones, added Fred. And the slimy skin, said Ted. And the yucky eyeballs, said Fuzz. <laughs> Well, never mind the fish, said Mr. Bear. Follow me. I know just what you bears need to eat. The young grizzly bears trailed up the hill behind Mr. Bear. They were all getting tired. Look, he told them, it's just a little bit further. Overhead, tucked in the branches of a tree, was a golden dome. Mr. Bear put the basket down, settled his baby in it, and climbed in the tree. What do you think he's going to get? What do bears like? Yes. Honey, Fred, Ted, and Fuzz watched in amazement as Mr. Bear gently dipped his paw into the golden dome surrounded by buzzing bees. You're really good at that, said Fred. When our dad does that, he gets stung, said Ted. And then he falls, said Fuzz. I guess you have to be pretty brave. Mr. Bear pulled out a big chunk of honeycomb. He climbed out of the tree and gave everyone a taste of the honey. I love honey, said Fred. Do you like honey? On bread or toast? I could eat the whole honeycomb and the hive it came from, said Ted. I could eat the whole honeycomb, the hive, and the bees as well, said Fuzz. And they all started for home. <laughs> when they got there, Mrs. Bear and the grizzly bears were waiting for them. You took the wrong picnic basket, said Mrs. Bear. All of you must be starving. No, said Fred, we found lots of honey. You should see Mr. Bear. Gathering honey, said Ted. 
He's really good at it. And we save some for you, said Fuzz. Yum. Mr. Bear smiled from ear to ear, bread and honey for dinner, he said. And they all sat down and had a tasty feast at another picnic. The end. Well, uh, now that summer's here and maybe school is over, maybe you're taking a break. Um, this is an example. One of the things that happens sometimes when you go on a picnic is sometimes there's ants at the picnic. Does that ever happen to you? <laughs> so this um, is an idea of something to do. You can put little puzzles that you like that a big person in your family can um, copy from the internet. And this is an ant maze. And mazes are kind of fun. My kids always enjoyed them, and so did I, as you have to find your way from the start to the finish. And not all the paths will get you where you want to go. So if you slide your puzzle in a page protector, you can use a marker and trace, and then you can wipe it off. You could also do this uh, in the car if you're going on a long trip, because summertime means trips to visit relatives, right? So this is another maze where the ants want to get to the picnic. <laughs> and then you can wipe it off and try again. Speaking of visiting the relatives, this is an old favorite of Miss Patty's. The Relatives Came by Cynthia Ryland, another favorite of mine, and illustrated by Skeet Stephen Gamble. Because this reminds me of my childhood vacations going to upstate New York near Lake Ontario and having a blast with my cousins. The relatives came. Maybe you're planning a trip this summer. It was in the summer of the year when the relatives came. They came up from Virginia. They left when their grapes were nearly purple enough to pick, but not quite. When you go on a trip, if it's a long drive, Sometimes you have to get up really early, don't you? They had an old station wagon that smelled like a real car. And in it, they put an ice chest full of soda pop and some boxes of crackers and some bologna sandwiches. And up they came from Virginia. They left at four in the morning when it was still dark before even the birds were awake. <laughs> They drove all day long and into the night. And while they traveled along, they looked at the strange houses and the different mountains. And they thought about their almost purple grapes back home. They thought about Virginia, but they thought about us too, waiting for them. So they drank up all their pop and ate up all their crackers and traveled up all those miles until finally, they pulled into our yard. Yay! It's always fun when relatives visit. Then it was hugging time. Talk about hugging. Those relatives just passed us all around the car, pulling us against their wrinkled Virginia clothes, crying sometimes. They hugged us for hours. <laughs> Then it was into the house and so much laughing and shining faces and hugging in the doorways. You'd have to go through at least four different hugs to get from the kitchen to the front room. Those relatives. Does that happen to you? 
And do they say, my, how you've grown? And finally, after a big supper or two or three times around till we got a turn at the table, there was quiet talk. And we were in twos and threes throughout the house. Always yummy, fun food when you visit the relatives. The relatives weren't particular about beds, which was good since there weren't any extras. So a few squeezed in with us and the rest slept on the floor, some with their arms thrown over the closest person or some with an arm across one person and a leg across another. It was different going to sleep with all that new breathing in the house. <laughs> The relatives stayed for weeks and weeks. They helped us tend the garden and they fixed any broken things they could find. Does that look like they're having a good time? Oh, I think so. They ate up all our strawberries and melons, then promised we could eat up all their grapes and peaches when we came to Virginia. Do you play music with your relatives? That looks like fun too. But none of us thought about Virginia much. We were so busy hugging and eating and breathing together. And what does that look like? Having picnics. Finally, after a long time, the relatives loaded their ice chests and headed back to Virginia at four in the morning. We stood there in our pajamas and waved them off in the dark. We watched the relatives disappear down the road. Then we crawled back into our beds that felt too big and too quiet. We fell asleep. And the relatives drove on all day and into the night. And while they traveled along, they looked at the strange houses and the different mountains and they thought about their dark purple grapes waiting at home in Virginia. But they thought about us too, missing them and they missed us. And when they were finally home in Virginia, they crawled into their silent soft beds and dreamed about the next summer. <clears throat> there are the purple grapes. Do you know that here at Samuel's out in our children's garden, I am seeing a bajillion clusters of teeny weeny baby grapes that promise to turn into real grapes. And they are organic and we don't spray them. And so when they're ready in another month, you can try them. So I hope you come and join us and enjoy the garden and come for a visit and just so you know, summer reading is about to start and that will be fun. And there will be prizes for all the books that you're reading. So I look forward to seeing you and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.